Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to talk about standard string. So strings are a important part of programming. So we use them all the time to gather user input, to display text and to put on widgets or put in games or whatever we might be using. We use strings all over the place. Well, the good news is we have a way to work with strings in the D programming language, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at how strings are implemented and just understand strings in general, how they're used. So here's the string uh, specification from the Phobos library here. So you can see we have lots of nice built-in functions to work with things like string. And what's really nice here is this set of things here works pretty well here. We've got functions to split, lowercase, find characters, all the things that we might want to do if you've ever done some string processing. Now, that said, though, let's go ahead and back up just for a moment and try to figure out what a string is. So for those who aren't aware, the most common way to represent strings in a machine is by using this thing known as an ASCII table or the ASCII representation of strings. So this covers a wide range of the sort of English alphabet as well as other characters that we might want to print out. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in a moment here. And let's go ahead and just run this program that we've got here. So here I've got our string library, uh, some other libraries that have been included, but nothing really fancy here. I'm just going to write out 65 here. And well, this writes out 65 as expected a number. But let's actually see what 65 is on our table. And I've got it towards the top here. We'll see in the decimal uh, column here, that's actually a capital letter A. OK, so let's go ahead and say to our computer that we want to treat this as a uh, character type so that when we write it out, it'll treat 65 or interpret that result as an actual character because, well, that's all our computers can do. They can just represent things as numbers, but we can, again, try to trick it and tell it that, hey, 65 actually means character, so write out A here. Now, one word of warning here, I'm going to go ahead and run this and we're going to get an error here because something we haven't talked about in this series is how to cast or treat data as a different type here. Luckily, though, the decompiler will usually give us a pretty good error uh, message and how to handle it. So we have to use this cast here. So let's go ahead and do that and say, yes, we want to explicitly treat 65 here as a character. And if I run this, then I'll get the letter A. So that's awesome. And that's something uh, that you might have to do depending on what type of data that you're looking at. Now let's assume though that we're often going to want to work with some sort of string data. So let's go ahead and uh, clear this out here. And let's actually get to our type for a string here. So we could just type out string and I'm just going to call it string one here uh, and then hello. OK, and let's just go ahead and write out this string here, which is just a series of characters, really some ASCII number values that will be represented here. But when we print them out, we know that we'll be able to treat those just as the textual characters from this ASCII table. OK, so hopefully that made enough sense here. And then we can go ahead and try to play around with, at this point, some of these different uh, built-in functions to the programming language in our Phobos library. So it's at this point that I would recommend that you go ahead and just try to play around with this. So let's go ahead and try this again. So we'll write out our string one here. Let's go ahead and choose one of these. Oh, maybe center, because that's kind of a unique one here. So we'll go ahead and click on center. And I could do. Um, I can either just follow the syntax here or I can do s1.center, which I'll talk about in a future lesson why we can do this. Uh, maybe 20 characters and let's just go ahead and put a uh, minus sign around them. And let's go ahead and try to write that out. And we could go ahead and see that we get hello here centered with these 20 characters, which is really nice. Um, I could go ahead and write this another way here. Let's go ahead and just use the function specifying our string as the first parameter. Again, it'll do the same thing, just in case you were concerned there. And let's go ahead and try a few more here, uh, functions that might be interesting for working with strings. Let's go ahead and try a common one here, like index of. And again, just getting used to reading some of the documentation here. Here's our range, or in other words, our string, the actual character that we're searching for, starting index, and then if we care if it's case sensitive or not. So let's go ahead and try this right line here. So index of S1, the character that we're searching for, let's look for L. Uh, let's start from zero. And I want to do yes, case uh, sensitive here. And let me make this a little bit uh, bigger here. And the yes, uh, case sensitive comes from this uh, library. That's why that uh, imports here. 
So let's uh, oops, let's go ahead and uh, save this. Just get rid of this here, and we'll go ahead and uh, oops, looks like I'm missing one right uh, bracket. And if we do this, it's at the second uh, position here. So zero, one, two. That's the index of our first uh, letter L here when we search here. Now, something you might be wondering here, and it was kind of interesting because I just sort of looked at this and I sort of counted the indexes when we do this, is that a string is actually an array in the deprogramming language. And that might be something that maybe seems intuitive, but again, it's just a string of characters. So if we go to our drawing board here, and I sort of represent this here, I'm going to break this string out here, do H E L L O for our hello string. And we can index into it with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Just like we learned about arrays in a previous lesson in this series. So you can check that out if you want to uh, verify. Uh, but here's something that's kind of interesting here. So again, just because we're representing this as an array, we can do some of the cool things like just access a slice of our string. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to write line this time, S1. And let's just give us from the uh, first character to the end. And then let's go ahead and run this. And then you can just see we get these sort of more slang. Hello, <laughs> I'm welcoming here. So this could be really efficient, this fact that we can just access this slice of something that already exists in memory. Now there is something to keep in mind here with our strings. Let's go ahead and see if we create another string. And I'll go ahead and create string two here. And let's just go ahead and put a nice message here like Mike. Let's go ahead and see if we can append these together. So I'm going to go ahead and do right line S1 append it with S2 for our message that we're going to write out. And that's fine. We could do hello, Mike. And we could even put in, say, uh, quotations maybe here, a space just to make it a little bit nicer. OK, so that's looking pretty good to us. Um, but I've noticed that Mike isn't capitalized here. So I can fix this in S1. But let's go ahead and just try to, like we did with our arrays here, just take the first character here and make it an uppercase M here. OK, so that it lines up here. And let's see what happens here. Hmm. OK, looks like I got an error here. And again, the decompiler is telling me something about this uh, data type that I've created. It says immutable expression S2 at 0. So D strings by default are what we call immutable. So that means immutable means we cannot change the data. OK, so in a way, that's sort of a really good thing. If we're writing programs that we're going to be accessing in parallel or we just want performance and sort of this guarantee that we can just access data and not have to worry about it changing, like with this little string slice here, that's actually a really good thing. And in general, it can make our program safer. But you might be saying, well, what if I really do need to modify this string here? Well, then we can just represent this as we learned before as a character array, something like this. And then if I rerun this, we can go ahead and see that, well, I'm not getting an error here. Um, but I do have to correct my data type here. So let me go ahead and uh, fix this up here to how we initialized it. And we'll have to do something like this to create the array. And let's go ahead and see how far we get here. So we can see that we can kind of mix some of these things together with how we were able to concatenate these types together. That's fine. But again, if I'm going to modify something, I need to initialize this as an actual array here. And you're going to notice um, what was kind of interesting here is if I just put in Mike in quotes here, it's treating this as an actual um, string here on our right side, which again makes sense here that this would be uh, taking place here. Uh, so it's not matching the array, again, initializing things one at a time with each of the individual indexes here. So I'll go ahead and write out that really um, there's an alias for string that is set to immutable, which is a keyword in the deep programming language. We haven't talked about it yet in this series but an immutable character array. That's how we would sort of treat 
or think about uh, or what exactly is a string in the D programming language. So that's something important to keep in mind that we can't modify them. If you do need to modify them, then you just use a regular uh, character array like this. OK, so with that said, I think that gives us a pretty good introduction into strings, how we use them, and some of the operations that we can use. As well as a little homework assignment for you is to just go through string and try some of these simple examples, try some of the built-in functions here. I think split's probably a good one, that, or uh, the string splitter. And then you can just go ahead and once you know how to use those, you'll be comfortable using all the built-in functionality here. All right, folks, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on string. We'll be talking more about strings throughout this series here. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And with that said, we'll see you in the next lesson.